Beyond the end of our solar system, uncharted scientific territory begins. No probe has ever been there, and no one has been able to measure what's actually going on in interstellar space until the Voyager 1 and 2 probes approached this mystery. Can you imagine that the scientists at NASA were so horrified by the measurement data that they thought the probes were broken? Part of the never-imagined truth comes to light, and we invite you to explore this terrifying encounter with us today. Fright at the Edge of the Solar System Voyager 1 is an exceptional phenomenon in space exploration. For more than 45 years, the probe has flown to areas of the solar system that no man-made object has boldly explored before. This mission is truly like a miracle. Voyager 1 and its twin probe, Voyager 2, were actually designed in a very simple way. If we were to compare the technology with that of today's probes, you could hold a cassette recorder next to a smartphone with state-of-the-art chip technology. But of all the things these simple probes deliver, now there's unbelievable data from the edge of the solar system and the alleged end of the heliosphere. Only the first horror with which scientists must deal now where exactly the sphere of influence of our solar system ends and the empty interstellar space begins, nobody has known so far. All assumptions were based on model calculations, and they are, as it looks now, wrong. Sometimes NASA and scientists reported that the end of the heliosphere was reached and both probes were in free flight through interstellar space. But then everything changed. Voyager 1 encountered a strange particle stream far out in space and sent data to Earth that caused confusion. How it all began In the 1960s, the U.S. government and NASA decided it was imperative to send probes to the outer planets of the solar system. Today, we can't even imagine that astronomers hardly knew anything about Jupiter, Uranus, or Neptune just 60 years ago. In the meantime, we're spoiled by cutting-edge images from almost all corners of our solar system. But in the 1960s and before, the existence of the outer planets was known, but no one knew details or had color photographs from the immediate vicinity of the planets. At the end of the 60s, one tinkered at NASA in the Rush procedure, a probe model which could photograph plasma currents as well as measure magnetic fields. The time was hurried along because astronomers had discovered something unbelievable. A unique constellation of the outer planets, with almost all of them aligned and much easier to reach than at any other time. This unique constellation occurs only about every 176 years. There was no way NASA could pass up this opportunity. To be on the safe side, it was decided to construct a twin probe. The two probes, about 6.5 meters long and 3.5 meters wide, were launched from Cape Canaveral in 1977, 15 days apart, to Neptune in just 12 years. A trip to Neptune should normally take 30 years, but thanks to the unique planetary position and another discovery, the time was shortened enormously. Astrophysicist Michael Minovich had calculated that space probes can accelerate enormously thanks to the gravitational pull of other planets. Thus, it was suddenly possible to send probes to extremely distant targets with minimal power. All of the mission's energy consumption was to be accomplished with the help of extremely durable radioisotope thermocouple generators. Unlike near-Earth satellites or probes approaching the inner planets, the Voyager probes could not use solar power this far out in space, sunlight is too sparse, and even then the plan was to keep Voyager probes flying after the main mission was over. To provide power for about 50 years, both probes were equipped with three different radioisotope thermocouple generators using powerful plutonium as a fuel source. The plutonium isotope decays slowly, yet so continuously that it releases a certain amount of heat throughout its operational life which is converted into electrical energy by each probe. Thanks to the unique position of the outer planets and clever flyby maneuvers, the probes needed little power of their own for their initial routes 
and were able to conserve their energy for the mission targets of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The cleverly planned gravity maneuvers brought Voyager 2 to Neptune in only 12 years. Both probes flew a divergent route. Voyager 1 took another shortcut that was not entirely free of risks. The spacecraft mastered the challenge and reached Jupiter in just two years after launch, on March 5, 1979, with Voyager 2 following shortly thereafter. With the equipment on board, both probes took the first ever close-up images of Jupiter, and for the first time, researchers were able to see the famous red spot in detail. This allowed conclusions to be drawn that the spot was the circulation of large masses of gases. At times, the storm was so massive that our Earth could have fit three times inside this extreme weather event. The probes mapped the whirlwinds on Jupiter's surface and for the first time sent data indicating water deposits on Jupiter's moon Europa. Images of active volcanoes on Io and the discovery of the largest natural satellite in the solar system, Ganymede, were other highlights of this trip. Yet Jupiter was only a stopover on Voyager's journey. Both probes soon left for Saturn, a planet that was no less mysterious and unknown at the time than Jupiter. Voyager 1 reached the ring planet in November 1980, and Voyager 2 nearly a year later in August 1981. The Saturn visit gave scientists a better view of its ring system and provided accurate measurements of the planet's wind speeds. Although Saturn appears very still and motionless in images, storms also rage in its gas layers, which can reach an incredible 1,800 kilometers per hour. This is a record in the entire solar system. Voyager 2 immediately headed for the next target, while Voyager 1 allowed the first glimpse of the nitrogen-rich atmosphere of Saturn's moon Titan. Scientists marveled at the texture of the moons of both gas giants. Some were reminiscent of geologically active worlds, and for the first time, the suspicion arose that the moons might harbor life. Since the Voyager mission, 10 new Saturn moons are known, and to this day, scientists do not rule out the possibility that Saturn has more moons. Voyager 1 took an elliptical turn after studying the Saturn system and headed directly for the heliosphere, while Voyager 2 approached Neptune and Uranus as planned. In August 1989, Voyager 2 reached Neptune and passed within 4,800 kilometers of the planet's North Pole. The flyby revealed the coolest planetary surface in the solar system, with temperatures as low as minus 133 degrees Celsius. Data sent by Voyager 2 almost revealed Earth-sized storms and fast-moving ice clouds on Neptune. Why such dynamic upheavals occur on Neptune, even though the planet gets hardly any sunlight, is a wonder. Most weather phenomena on our planet are directly related to solar activity, but on Neptune, phenomena such as a mysterious internal heat source or mechanisms due to reactions of methane molecules in the atmosphere are likely behind the unusual weather phenomena. Voyager 2 left the blue, icy planet in 1989 and headed to the opposite edge of our solar system. Voyager 1 reaches the shock front. Fifteen years later, Voyager 1 was the first to reach the region of our solar system, known as the shock front or termination shock. In these remote areas of our solar system, the speed of the solar wind decreases abruptly. You can think of the solar wind as a steady stream of charged particles being blown from the sun in all directions into space. When the solar wind interacts with the interstellar medium of matter and particles, it creates a kind of breaking effect, or the termination shock. This interaction slows down the solar wind and causes a boundary gradient where the solar wind virtually stops and merges into the interstellar medium. The position of this shock front has been estimated to be about 80 to 100 astronomical units from the Sun. One astronomical unit is equal to the average distance between the Earth and the Sun, which is about 150 million kilometers. In the termination shock zone, solar winds slow their speed from millions of kilometers per hour 
to just 400,000 kilometers per hour. Although these values still seem incredibly high, they are nothing compared to the much faster interstellar speeds at which cosmic rays travel through our galaxy, for example. In August 2012, NASA first reported that Voyager had crossed the boundary of the heliosphere and entered interstellar space. But then came the impossible measurement that caused a stir on Earth. Analyzing data taken by Voyager 1 during a unique solar mass ejection, it came up with astonishingly high readings. Millions of kilometers from the Sun, the particle stream around the Sun caused a much higher intensity than it should have. We remind you that NASA announced that Voyager 1 was in interstellar space, that is, where the sphere of influence of our Sun is lost. But the vibrations caused by the solar storm were apparently much higher in interstellar space than within the heliosphere. The world of science turned upside down. At first, researchers speculated that Voyager 1's measuring instruments had a defect and were providing false data. But everything turned out to be correct. There remained two possibilities with which the scientists must cope now somehow. Either Voyager 1 had not yet reached the end of the heliosphere, or the probe had discovered a mysterious new force in interstellar space. What secrets does the interstellar medium hold? Researchers refer to the void beyond the heliosphere as interstellar space. According to previous assumptions, this is not completely empty, but filled with particles of high energy and intense cosmic rays. Our solar system, like the entire galaxy, moves through interstellar space with the sun's gravitational pull holding the planets together and the heliosphere building up a protective field around the planets to shield them from the harsh radiation of interstellar space. You can think of the heliosphere as an invisible bubble of charged solar particles. These particles represent an invisible force of their own, similar to that of gravity. The magnetic field of the heliosphere also protects our life on Earth. If we did not have this protective particle field, cosmic rays from the depths of the cosmos would very likely make any life impossible. But now researchers had to find out that the power of our Sun reaches far beyond the heliosphere into interstellar space. And yes, even more. The power of the Sun seems to gain strength once again in this mysterious space and this fact will overthrow all previous models of interstellar space. So far, researchers don't know what consequences this discovery will have for the overall cosmological picture. We know very little about the interstellar medium and, of course, researchers hope that Voyager 1 and 2 will continue to send data for a few more years. Even though the probes are now operating at less than 50% of their original power, they can still reach the probes, which are now more than 20 billion kilometers away. It now takes more than 20 hours for their measurement data to reach Earth. Many of the devices on board the probes have already been switched off to save power. Nevertheless, scientists at NASA are still hoping for another breakthrough in the exploration of interstellar space. What do you think they'll find there?